radio station alongside E. White, Joe Williams. I'm mm-hmm. Zach Simon. We got a jam-packed show for you today on what's a somber day in Philadelphia. Flyers owner and insert adjective here, just this guy embodied Philadelphia sports, the culture, the passion, the fans. This was the guy. He will go down. Mr. Snyder, Ed Snyder, will go down as one of the greatest owners this town has ever seen. And unfortunately, at the age of 83, cancer has taken this man from the from the earth, and uh, we need to send our condolences to the Snyder family and the Flyers organization. Fellas, what's going on? Uh, you know, Ed Snyder... Growing up as a kid, obviously, the reason why the Philadelphia Flyers are the Broad Street Bullies, the reason why the Philadelphia Flyers are the are the, Flyers. Are the face, basically, yeah, are the Flyers. You know, <laughs> outside of anything else, he is the creator. You know, the reason why the Flyers are as big as they are in this city is because of this man. Man, this man created the dynasty that is. Philadelphia sports and the Flyers and also the Sixers. He owned the Sixers for a very long time. Uh, mm-hmm. This is a guy who, you know, made some of the best business decisions, in my personal opinion, that could go in any sort of sporting, you know, anything really, period. I think that you look at Ed Snyder and you look at him and he is just one of the best entrepreneurs this Honestly, this country has seen as far as it goes with sports. Um, he handled himself professionally. He was all around, from what I've heard from many people who have interacted with him, was just all around one of the sweetest guys to ever grace this earth. Honestly, I think that you know Philadelphia is going to miss him, and it's but his legacy lives on every day by that sports complex down in South Philly off of Broad and Patterson. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, he made that what it is. Xfinity Live was one of his ideas. Everything like that. He just basically made everything that you could want and more in Philly sports. So. Hats off to him, to him. My thoughts and prayers and whatever else is with uh, him and his family. And obviously, the Flyers going into the playoffs. It's good to see that he, you know, could at least see that little bit of run right before they get into the playoffs. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I think that's something that yes. he he can go and yeah. rest easy knowing. And I think that's something that, you know, it's funny. I really think it's funny when people leave this earth that things coincidentally happen like that. And you notice that with, you know, Ed Snyder. The day after, or a day or two after, the Flyers clinch a playoff berth, you know, he's gone. And I think that just makes so much sense, and it's like a poetic justice kind of thing. And you just have to be so happy. Yeah, you ha- this, because there's no guy, Eric, that, that was a bigger Flyers fan than this guy. And the fact that they could put this together for him during this tough time. And, and you know, if you've been, if you followed the articles on this guy, he's been ailing for quite a while now. And, and, and the writing was on the wall, and it's, it's, a, it's a dang shame. Um, I want to read a quote uh, directly from his grandkid. Um, I'll rely, his, his name is Garrett. Uh, I'll re- quote, I'll rely on my favorite granddad lesson throughout deep sadness. No matter good fortune or bad, proper logic or age, granddad was of the firm belief that his best days were always ahead of him. This propelled him forward and kept him forever young. We can honor him by always striving for higher and by believing that our best days are yet to come too. Now, wow. That's a tearjerker right there. Right? Yeah, It really is. I mean, like, and, and to anybody that is close to their grandparents, you know, me personally, my, my relationship with my grandfather knows no boundaries, um, you know, before he passed away. So, like, it's great to see that he could honor him like that. And it's, it, it's, it sucks because we're so emotional about this, but I think we're very happy about it at the same time that Ed Snyder made the impact that he did on this city right. and our childhoods, honestly, because we all grew up in this area and loved the teams that he loved. And, you know, it's great to see that he has this following amongst his peers. He has this love amongst his family. And it's just great to see that he made such a lasting legacy. And I, I have nothing but good things to say about him. He, he was truly a super fan. He, when, when, the, when the Orange and Black suited up, he was there every single night. This season, unfortunately, because of health reasons, I believe he only went to one or two games. Um, but he, and he embodied the passion of the Philadelphia sports fan. And I want to, they, they released, did you guys happen to see this nine minute tribute video? Did you get a chance? I, no. caught, I caught a little bit of it. Totally watch this. This is totally worth your time. And there was one little snippet in here about um, <laughs> when, when the Flyers visited Madison Square Garden, one of Snyder's uh, right hand man, man, if you will, um, invited a Rangers uh, sales exec. 
or, or a Rangers exec to join them in the booth, and it, this is just great. Listen to this. That was really exciting to be the only Flyers fans in a huge screaming Ranger building, and I invited the chairman of the home box office to join me, and Ed gave me one of those Ed Snyder looks with the eyes and the stare. And the game ended, and thank goodness we won the game. And he took me aside. We were brand new partners. We didn't know each other that well. He said... Don't ever bring a Ranger fan to my box again. I love that. <laughs> that's that's what we call like a passionate, die-hard yeah. fan. That is, is incredibly Philadelphia. And shout out to JT for uh, following his Rangers promptly in April. Um, feel free to call in, JT, if you've got any gripe with that statement. JT, I love you. Stop talking about your fantasy team, but I still love you. <laughs> I, that's the argument we had all the time last semester. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I told JT the same thing. Yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares about your fantasy team. But speaking of reality teams, these guys, um, uh, the Flyers have so much history. Um, something Now, the, the typical Flyers fan will tell you that the, the Stanley Cup victories, Joe and Eric, were, were the two greatest moments of the franchise, and, and I totally get that. But personally, as an American, as, an, as a Patriot, the Flyers were the only team out of all NHL teams to defeat the Soviet Russians. Mm -hmm. Y'all are familiar with this story. Yeah, they killed yeah. them. They kicked the crap out of them in typ typical Broad Street bully fashion. The Russian coach pulled his team from the ice with about a minute 30, minute 10 to go. And what does Ed Snyder do? He marches down from his box, goes into the locker room, and goes up to the coach of the USSR, the Russians, and says, if you don't play... You're not getting paid. Get back out there. And they went back out there. Ed Snyder, this the, the cojones on this man. Oh yeah, he. Oh, I'm telling you, man. Like you said, goodness. it's just quintessential Philadelphia pride right there. Everything that you see in South Philly, North Philly, West Philly, wherever you might be in this city, Ed Snyder embodies it, man. He's hard bodied. He was hard bodied. He still is. He's going to carry that on through his legacy. But I think, you know, you mentioned that as one of the best memories in Flyers history. As a young Flyers fan, watching Keith Primo in the fifth overtime yes. score that goal was the greatest moment of my life. I have never, like, as a young kid staying up that late, I had to tell my mom, like, I had to like beg my mom to be yes. like just let me stay up mom just let me stay up no you have to go to school tomorrow i don't care i want primo to score like it was just like because keith primo was my favorite player when i was growing up oh, so yeah. i lost so it you know between him and desjardins because they're just hard bodied they're nothing special nothing crazy they're just gritty and tough and that's how they played and that was like a type of player that ed snyder always advocated for on his team you notice the broad street bullies you notice everything like that the flyers are hard bodied because ed snyder their owner was hard bodied and you see so much less of that now in sports nowadays and to think that Ed Snyder helped create that culture and keep it going is something I as a sports fan, whether I'm a Flyers fan whether whatever, I will always be thankful for I got some audio for you on that Keith Primo goal if you want to hear it. Oh uh, please, it's it. just the, the memories. Here it is, Keith Promo Promo, Keith Primo <laughs> wins it in the fifth overtime Oh. It's, it's beautiful. And the Penguins go home. Oh, this is, <laughs> Who doesn't that, like that? That was my childhood. Oh, man. That, that brings back great memories when I didn't have to worry about things. It's just awesome. Doesn't it? Oh. J Jeremy Roenick, man, I feel the same way about JR. He just brought so much energy and life to and, and charisma to this team. And it was... Mm. Uh, uh, Oates, Adam Oates... Adam Oates, Rick Tockett, you know, Forsberg. guys like that. Forsberg, yeah. Rod Brindamore, like, oh, man. Yeah. Man, that got me reminiscing when I actually watched hockey consistently. <laughs> oh, man. I'm glad. I'm glad I got you. Yeah, yeah, now you got me in the mood. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm not going that far. <laughs> not like that? Oh, wow, okay. Oh, good thing we, we're all mature adults here. Thanks, guys. Well, this escalated quickly. No. Oh. Anyway. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, Back to wanna... actual hockey. Yeah, let's talk about the current I never team left hockey. Because... Trump, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> 28 to 1 odds are these Flyers, and that's second worst in the league. Right and... where we want them. Yeah, right? This, seriously. I, I truly believe, and I rarely say this, I rarely predict teams are going to win championships, guys, but I truly believe there's some juju going right now. The Flyers are going to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, They're well, playing like a four seed. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves you know, here, Zisai. Listen, man. Anything with this new setup in the playoffs 
anything's really possible in my opinion. Right. Um, and guess what? No shootout. Yeah, no shootout. Advantage Flyers, which is incredible. Um, because you know who likes a shootout. Agreed. Nobody. It's the. I think it's the dumbest idea to ever happen to sports, in my opinion. I hate shootouts. That's I think bold. they're stupid. I really do. That is um, I don't know. Up there with running back by committee. Absolutely hate it. <laughs> uh, nonetheless. I respect that. Yeah. Nonetheless, I think in this bracket, obviously you're facing the Capitals. The Capitals are like the the, the way the way the Warriors are in the NBA right now. The Capitals are in the NHL. They're just dominant right now. Um, and I think that it's going to be a tough matchup. Nonetheless, you know the Flyers. This isn't the first time they've been the underdogs. You know, anything can happen. Do I think it's going to? Eh, you know, probably not. But you know what? I can hope. And, the, you know, the kid to me wants it to happen. But there's a lot of teams right now. This whole entire bracket I'm looking at right now, anybody can win this. And I'm not just saying that. Like, I'm dead serious. There's a lot of really talented, underrated teams in this whole entire bracket. I look out west and I look at the wild, and I think the wild have something there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Up against they uh, always. Yeah, seriously. They always, they're always up to something. <laughs> you know, so. Um, yeah, they are. They are. And, and, you know, I'm not even worried about this Flyers-Caps matchup, to be honest. It, it doesn't scare me. The teams know each other. Yeah, the Caps are playing out of their mind, but they're 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 classic choke artists. They just are. And, and I'm taking words right out of Michael Zahn's mouth, but it's the truth. They just don't find ways to win in the playoffs. And the Flyers have all the ingredients right now. They have great goaltending. Yes. They have, if it, when, it's not if, it's when. When Neuvirth comes back, they, got, they have multiple options. Great forward play. The defense has been solid. Um, you've got X factors like Giroux, Voracek, Gostisbehere. And Gostisbehere to me really is the turning point. I got a quote here I want to share with you guys. This is back from um, in, in November on the 12th. And uh, I couldn't tell you that. Well, the Flyers were struggling. They were 1-7-2 and two in their last 10. And, and Ryan White was in the locker room, and he was quoted as saying this. Hold on. I just don't wouldn't say earlier today when he was asked if he was thinking about changing up the chemistry here by making a trade. But uh, when you guys are uh, 16 games in at the one seven and two in your last ten, uh, do you worry that changes could be made? I mean, if you're not worried in this game, you, you're not you're not doing your job. And uh, you know, I think uh, you should always be a little bit worried of your your job and your uh, the possibility of getting moved. But uh, you know, obviously, that doesn't help. So. You know, we need to be better in here, and uh, you know, it doesn't matter what he does, brings in someone or whatever. You got, one guy is not going to change anything. So, uh. right there, one guy is not going to change anything. And I remember sitting there with my my iPhone in my hand and, and listening to that quote, and I thought to myself, "Yeah, there is. There's one guy who can change the entire landscape of this team, and it's Shane Gostisbehere. He's come up to the to the national to, to the oh my god, NHL. Step, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was I wanted to say professional, but anyway, he's come up to the professional level, and just emerged as a superstar this, yeah yeah got, got to you know you look at a lot of the youth in philly right now you look at guys like um michael franco franco for the phillies you look at guys like nerlens noel and jaloa for, for the sixers and it's the same thing with jay shane gossip as far as it goes with flyers and i look at what he's doing right now and i haven't seen a rookie play like this in hockey in a very long time you know i mean obviously you look at guys like crosby you look at guys like ovechkin and whatever right. but like outside of that you don't really see anybody that has that it factor and a lot of people were talking about God's of Spirit being like this big name and everything like that. And I had my doubts last year. I really did. Right. I'm always very skeptical about young players. We all know this here. Yes. Um, but nonetheless, I always think you know people need some experience. Nonetheless, mm-hmm. he comes up here and takes the team by storm. And God's of Spirit, I'm not really one to say that um, play, one player can make a huge difference in the game, but if there's one game that that can happen, it's the sport of hockey. And I think that he can definitely do that. Interesting. The sport of hockey. Okay. Um, we're, we're up against it here at WHIP, Philadelphia's number one college radio station. And before we jump into our break, I want to hold a moment of silence on the airwaves here today for the, the for Ed Snyder, the tremendous owner who has passed. So you're listening to WHIP, Philadelphia's number one college radio station.